Let's talk about some pearls. How did we acquire the pearl necklace and the earrings? I like the earrings. I like the necklace too. Your mother's. There are a couple of things that indicate time period, first of all, with these types of sets. They are cultured pearls. A lot of people say, I didn't ever see the cultured pearls that have the hook, right? The hook here with these smaller millimeter cultured pearls, so the hook would hook to one of those. What you have here is probably a 16 inch. It's probably pretty tight. Be pretty tight around my neck. Yeah, it's um, pretty small. Yeah, okay. And then it also has, of course, this little crystal at the bottom. This, these pieces here are lever back. That's a lever back. So it goes click, click, like a lever. Lever back earrings. Oh, and now that indicates age, right? Because what happens is, if you see what just happened there, the glue came off. Okay. And that's pretty typical, of course, of these pieces that are eh, probably 60, 60 to 80 years old, right? Now, these, these are not cultured pearls. These are costume. So technically, not a set. You have the cultured pearls here of the, of the necklace in good shape, probably worth, eh, I'd say, about $450. And then you have the earrings, which you could put some silicone glue back if you wanted to glue it back. These are worth about $50 in good condition with the glue and about $25 without the glue. <laughs> right? And that's what you're looking at. Hi, sir. How are you? What's your name? Jason. Hi, Jason. Nice to meet you. How'd you acquire this? Goodwill. Okay, great. Are you finding cool stuff? I don't know if I can get my hand in there. I can't. I'll try this. Can't get it. You tell me what the receipt says. It says $19.99, so you pay 20 bucks for it. Right? Okay. It's got a very nice label on it that says, well, it says something more than just Murano. So let's talk about what that says. First of all, the placement of it. Notice how it's placed on this. It's just sort of stuck here like that. Usually they're going to be under here. This says in Italian, created in the style of Murano. Created in the style of the artisans of Murano. Right? Here you go. Notice here, do you see the bottom here? Do you notice how this, it looks different. You notice how this base is, a, is actually a molded base. It is, of course, glass, and it's been attached to this. A Murano piece, click, wouldn't have this. But basically, so you have this. This has been glued on at some point, wasn't originally there. This is a, probably an original sticker, but it basically says, because the folks in Murano knew, that so many people were in fact copying their works and saying it was Murano, even if it was made in anywhere else in Italy, you know, pick a town in Italy, Verona, or, or you know, Bari, or wherever it might have been. And then they're just saying, well, it's not really Murano, but it's made in the style of Murano. Ah, well, you know, I'm made in the style of the swimsuit models from Sports Illustrated too. I got the same parts as those girls, but let me tell you what. <laughs> I am made in the style of only. I am not a, sw a swimsuit model. So that's where we start to see this. Value on this particular piece. This has a couple of issues. This is an issue right here. I don't know if you can see that, but right here you can see where they actually have that rod. It's extended. Yeah, a little bit. Not cracked, not chipped, not in bad shape. But the base, well, it lifts it up. It's not original to it. The label, I don't question the label. I think the label is original, but it's not Murano. If it were Murano, we'd be talking 275, 300 bucks. Not Murano, we're talking about $125. Thrift store. It's definitely worth 20 bucks. And a lot of people will be surprised at all oh, the stuff in the thrift stores. And all the thrift store people know how much everything is worth. Well, guess what? That's not true. That's not true. And or they're just deciding they want to move the inventory. Speaking of glass, let's talk about carnival glass or iridescent glass. How did we acquire this piece, which has a nice ruffled element? Nice. So carnival glass, this particular one has sort of a nice marigold color with some azure, some blue in the interior. This piece does not have a mark in the middle, so we would have to identify it by the actual pattern. So do you have any information about your pattern name? It sure looks like a Northwood pattern. So if you look at the bottom and it has a, first of all, if you look at the bottom, you can see that it, from my angle, you can see that it kind of comes down. I don't know if you can see that. You can see it from where I'm standing. Maybe you can see it. it kind of goes straight and then it goes down like that. I don't know if you're seeing that. But basically it's straight and then it has this little element like almost as if it's not square all the It's not circular all the way around. So that's, it, a that's a defect. Um, if the color of the glass is red, it's more valuable is a myth. 
And there's a lot of myths out there in the antique world. So, well, I mean, it could be from a book, but they would think, oh, the red is more valuable. But it has to do with the patterns and the makers. But this particular piece, I would say, is worth about $45. Hi, how did we get the painting, the still life? Stationed in Berlin in 1965. Well, it was older then. Yes, OK? And here's how I'll know, and here's how you'll know. I'm going to do one of these. You see the color here of that canvas? The color of the canvas will in indicate date, age. This one has a little bit of browning, right? And that's over time. Also, if you notice here and you look down, you're going to see all these nails, right? And this particular piece, these nails also suggest, of course, the time period of about 1920. It's also dated. What do you know about the artist? Well, a couple of, a couple of things, first of all. Um, the type of name, I don't think this is his complete name. I think there's an, the, you'll notice the period after, after Trek, after Triek, it's probably a little bit longer. And then they just will, he'll just abbreviate it. That's pretty typical as well. I would say that there's a couple of things about it that indicate to me that it's been somewhere very, very hot for a long time. Was it ever in an attic? Was it in a home in a, in a sunny part of the house? OK, and here's why. If you notice this, this kind of crackler is not consistent with early 20th century paintings unless they have been um, in a particular place that's relatively hot. And I mean like Africa hot, <laughs> you know, like hot, right? Not just like, oh, well, it's a little bit warm today kind of thing. It's really had to be somewhere where there's consistent temperature and humidity change, and that change is, you know, increase. That heat is increasing. Um, it's a nice piece. You can tell that there is aspects of the Dusseldorf Art um, Society. That's one of the training grounds that we see many of the Dutch, um, also Belgian, and also, of course, German artists training. Some of these a aspects, like putting a very large, um, multi-textural work of art or, as or element in the middle, and then you have other pieces that are related but a little bit different on either side. And then we see this nice diagonal that we always see. Oftentimes you're going to see, again, to show you the perspective of the table, we're going to give you a little bit of this um, and the grapes. It's a nice painting. It's significant in size, too. The frame is new. So the frame was probably a frame that was, maybe it was put in it in the late 20th century, but newer than the work of art, certainly. Value on the piece, I would say anywhere between $2,500 and $2,800. That includes the frame. It looks like a ceramic piece, Tevin, right? So ceramic like clay. And that particular piece would then be glazed. So you've seen a piece of clay that's glazed, maybe a picture in your house or such, right? And then what they do is they put gold plate on top of it. So they take a very, very, um, a very, very thin actual uh, sheet of gold and they'll plate it. They call it plating because there's a process where you can actually allow that gold sheet to stick to a material like ceramic. Then they take a paintbrush and they use enamel paints to make all the colored portions. And then this piece, of course, is a nice piece of solid rock. They'll actually drill into it. And you see all this portion, all of this gold portion? All of this gold portion, in fact, is going to be the areas where you're going to see, again, they're trying to they're trying to cover up, right, this portion where they're going to drill into the bottom, right? So value on your piece, which also has a mark on it right here, this little mark that says 85, indicating it's from 1985. Uh, not quite 40 years, just about 40 years old, if you will, and I would say value on this particular piece, you're looking at probably 65 to $75. How did you acquire this? Tell me your first name. Hey, Derek, how's it going? A lot of thrift stores. So I've got an ink with watercolor. Got some kind of a seal on it, and I see uh, a French signature in the back. So what made you buy it? Because it was front and back. Somebody bothered to actually do the drawing front and back. Come out of a sketchbook, right? So somebody's doing sketches here. They're basically doing a plan for a larger work of art. That's typically what you're looking at. It's French. It's 19th century. I would say value on it without much information about the artist you're looking anywhere between $350 and $500. Always, 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 never a good idea to put glass on both sides of any work of art, um, because what happens is you're making a sandwich of glass, and the artwork cannot breathe. So you need a little bit of a spacer in between. 
That's basically what we're looking at. It's a nice piece, though. I like it. Um, a little bit more research. It's probably one of those artists working in the 1860s in the manner of Millet. Um, it, it's not really a Daumier-style piece, but it's definitely a realist artist of the 1860s, 1870s France. Nice. 